Well, let's focus on one of the hardest hit provinces, Ontario. The Premier, Doug Ford, is in isolation after being exposed to a staff member who tested positive. The Premier so far has tested negative. He's facing heavy criticism over his response to the third wave and more calls for the right kind of restrictions and benefits such as paid sick leave for essential workers to curb the spread of the infection in Ontario. Dr. Peter Juni is the head of Ontario's science table created to advise the Premier on how to tackle COVID-19. This past weekend, he came close to quitting that role and he's with me now. Uh, Dr. Juni, first of all, thanks for taking time to speak with me. It's good to see you. Uh, Look, new infections in Ontario jumping again, uh, over 4,200 today. Uh, there are a record number of COVID patients in intensive care, almost 800. How close is the province's health system, do you think, to buckling under that continuing strain? I can't possibly tell you. It's it's a really, really challenging situation. And, the, you know, the major issue here is we need to be aware of. Even though now we have, you know, a little bit of an indication that the curve is flattening, uh, this doesn't mean that anything changes. You know, right now, a continued increase in uh, ICU occupancy is just baked in for several weeks. And even which won't happen. We were able to make case numbers plummet from tomorrow onwards, as it has happened, for instance, in Ireland. It would still take several weeks during which the uh, the uh, occupancy on in ICUs would go up and up. We will be way above 1,000 ICU beds occupied by patients due to COVID-19 um, before things start to go down, even if we get this under control now and start to get these numbers okay. down. So we're in this for a while. Do you believe uh, there are calls here in Ottawa again today that the Prime Minister should invoke the Emergencies Act and take a more active role in the pandemic response in Ontario? You've been critical of that response. Have we come to that? Do, do you want to see the Emergencies Act and Ottawa no. more involved? Look, I'm, I'm completely incompetent to answer this question. What I can tell you is that, um, you know, governments all across the world actually are struggling right now. And, you know, the point there is we need to understand that, that um, this wave that we're in, dominated by these new variants of concern that are 40% more transmissible, doesn't allow political compromises anymore. And we're not the only ones who struggle here. We need to be aware of that. What does this mean? You know, during wave one and wave two, where we had just the traditional variants, you could sort of compromise and you have who could have, you know, some considerations that would also just, uh, you know, just make a compromise uh, and a concession uh, regarding some some uh, political aspects that I'm actually incompetent, you know, to okay. cover. The problem is, if you have now uh, an, a variant that is 40% more transmissible, you will not be able to sort of model your way through, you know, with measures that are not completely stringent. Okay. And uh, that's what's happening now. And it's not only happening here. You know, I'm Swiss originally. I see things, again, start to go wrong quite a bit in Switzerland. I, I see, uh, you know, people, you know, in, a, in a elected, elected officials just really struggling all over the world to, to do the right thing. The problem is, if you compromise now, you pay it dearly and your people pay it dearly. Okay, let's, the Ford government's been reluctant to implement a legislated paid sick leave program for essential workers because there's a federal program. Uh, now the Premier's reconsidering. Uh, why does Ontario need a legislated paid sick leave if there's a federal program? The federal program is a really challenging concept that doesn't work. We need to face it. I'm afraid to say it was probably counterproductive. Why? Mm -hmm. You need to look at that from a very practical perspective. If I am an essential worker working in a warehouse, for example, and I wake up this morning with a sore throat, I need to be able to call my employer and say, I have a sore throat, I need to stay home, I'm sorry, and I need to have a guarantee that I get my paycheck on Friday. If, it's, if this is not happening this way, the entire concept of paid sick leave falls flat. We have a lot of people in this province who actually are struggling and really just live from paycheck to paycheck to be able, you know, to pay the rent, to put food on the table of their kids, etc. Mm -hmm. And any threshold, you know, that that, that is uh, too high, like a delay in payment or 
or perhaps you know no guarantee that you get paid or any administrational issues there that doesn't work if you look into european countries what you see is a very uncomplicated system mm -hmm. it's the employers that pay and they look after the money later okay the 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 uh, we, we think Ontario, Ontario is bringing something on, so we'll we'll wait and see whether it, it meets meets the bill or not. Um, but if we look at, I mean, we, you have we've we've heard from you a lot in, in the news lately because you you've spoken out about the the, the shutdown of outdoor activities that uh, the Ford government introduced. You said that wasn't your advice; that was the wrong approach. That we really needed to focus on indoor activities more than outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. And and you talked about. Uh, you know, you almost quit your position because you said politics is guiding the pandemic, not science. But you know, a lot of people, this is a political channel. Uh, you know, people know that politics is played to get an advantage. So, what advantage is the premier getting by making decisions? They're seeing him be attacked by all sides. Yeah, well, again, I'm, I'm unable to comment on that directly. What I just realize is, you know, if you have a situation like the one that we're in, that is really precarious, if you deal with this uh, by, uh, you know, just uh, having, again, political considerations, it will be very challenging to get it under control and this will eventually backfire. I think that's, that's a real issue here. What I saw, you know, end of last week was really um, measures that um, showed that the nature of the pandemic was poorly understood. You know, this pandemic has two major characteristics mm -hmm. that are relevant for this province right now. One is, it's now a pandemic of essential workers and their families. That's where paid sick leave comes in and the clear distinction between essential and non-essential workplaces. And the other one is, it drives indoors the virus and not outdoors. Meaning, you have these two concepts that you just need to tackle properly and that's a lot of common right. sense, a bit of science. But very quickly, so you're saying, so not invoking provincial sick leave is playing politics? Uh, no, I'm not talking about playing politics, but what I see is everybody struggle, you know, uh, from, from my layman's perspective as a scientist worldwide, uh, uh, politicians is that they do not appreciate that this wave that we're in right now is different than before. Yeah. And if you have political considerations that you take into account in addition to science and the current epidemiological situation, you're unlikely to get the pandemic under control and this will eventually backfire for everybody. All right, uh, hearing you on that. Thank you so much, Dr. Juni, for your time today. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.